Straight ahead on CCX News, a pedestrian struck and killed in Brooklyn Park. How the incident serves as an important reminder. What I've seen myself is the fishing quality has been uh, uh, such a huge difference. The steps a local lake group took to improve a Robbinsdale Lake. And later we meet a crystal homeowner who enjoys a good scare in his neighborhood. CCX News starts right now. We will have those stories in just a moment, but first, a man arrested for allegedly trying to bomb prominent Democratic leaders could have ties to Plymouth. According to Minnesota court records, 56-year-old Caesar Sayok Jr. was arrested in Bloomington January in 1995, and at the time of that arrest, he had a Plymouth address. Sayok was picked up for fifth-degree possession of crack cocaine and theft by swindle, both felony offenses. Those charges, though, were later dropped. FBI officials arrested Sayok in Florida on Friday morning. The FBI has recovered 13 improvised explosive devices and says there may be more out there. Minnesota court officials say they can't be absolutely certain Sayok is the same Sayok arrested in the Twin Cities years ago. A Brooklyn Park man is dead after he was struck by a car while crossing the street Thursday night. The incident happened near the intersection of Brooklyn Boulevard and Welcome Avenue in Brooklyn Park at around 9 p.m. Thursday. Police say the car was traveling westbound on Brooklyn Boulevard and hit the man while he was crossing the street in an area that doesn't have a crosswalk. First responders administered first aid to the 59-year-old man, but he died at the scene. Anytime we have an incident like this, it's, it's tragic and it's starting to look like this is just a very tragic event where um, the witnesses indicated that the driver was driving responsibly, he was driving slow, um, and it's a dark air road in the middle of the night like that. Um, accidents can happen, so we're always expressing people to use the traffic control devices that are out there, use the crosswalks, um, and be cautious when you cross these busy roadways like Brooklyn Boulevard. Police say with Halloween approaching, pedestrians should wear bright clothing while drivers should be extra cautious and avoid distractions. A lake restoration project is coming full circle. Reporter Meredith Hackler spoke with the Lower Twin Lake Association and shows us how they plan to continue their progress. Over the last four years, Twin Lakes have had around 3,000 fish released into their waters. We were able to stock the lake with uh, uh, about 800 walleye, six to eight inch walleye. The fish release that most recently took place cost the association around $2,000, replacing carp and other invasive fish. The combination of taking the rough fish out and putting the good fish into the lake uh, is going to really, we believe, help the water quality over the next few years. The association has been working to improve the water quality for about five years, and members say they've seen results. What I've seen myself is the fishing quality has been uh, uh, such a huge difference day and night from what it was. But the organization didn't do it alone. Thanks to the, uh, the Shingle Creek Watershed District for harvesting the bullheads and the carp uh, and the city of Robbinsdale who helps us with uh, keeping the weeds uh, down in the middle of the lake. Um, I think that team effort has really helped to, uh, to improve the quality of the lake. The association hopes the results will encourage more homeowners along the shoreline to do their part in keeping the lake clean. We've been, you know, encouraging homeowners to treat their shoreline uh, that, uh, you know, invasive, invasive species are, are uh, something that we can do as homeowners to control on our shoreline. And if everybody takes part in that, it really improves the water quality. In Robbinsdale, Meredith Hackler, CCX News. A Robbinsdale restaurant is trying to get others in the Halloween spirit. St. Petersburg Restaurant and Vodka Bar is planning a fun weekend of Halloween festivities. Tonight, Friday, it's hosting a Halloween disco party for the adults. And then Saturday at 2, it's hosting a Halloween dance party for the kids. Kids event is not going to be that scary and spooky. It's going to be fun. We are waiting for parents with the kids with their bright costumes, fun costumes. If you want to be scary, please be scary, but it's going to be fun and friendly Halloween. The restaurant faces an uncertain future. You may recall that site is slated to become apartments, but the restaurant tells us they will be open for at least one more year. Still to come, do you like the Queen of Hearts or the Mad Hatter? There are lots of great characters in Alice in Wonderland. See how North Hennepin brings them to life. 
Plus, Wyzetta takes on rival Minnetonka in the state boys soccer quarterfinals. But first, cloudy days expected over the weekend, but the sun is expected to peek through by next week. North Hennepin Community College's new play hits the stage this weekend. Our own Neil Persley gives us a front row seat in today's Weekend Showcase. The Disney animated version hit the screens in 1951. Tim Burton's version was in theaters in 2009. Well, I don't think uh, I chose it, I think it chose me. But the North Hennepin Community College's stage version of Alice in Wonderland is truly original. Once you get to a, a certain age, we remember Alice in Wonderland. It was written in, what, 1865? So I remember the Disney version of Alice in Wonderland, probably pr pretty much imprinted on my on my brain. I also read the novel when I was very young. Creating Wonderland on stage was going to be a challenge and the four sculptures created by Moira Bateman dominate the stage. We knew we were going to do it in this space so we knew they needed to be huge. Um, I think the largest sculpture is 14 and a half feet. It's going to be spectacular. I would say that it's a lot of shocking stuff in terms of like visual effects and all that. I mean you look at it now but like what we can do with it I say is like going to be the most incredible part. The sculpture's backdrop and even the characters are all in white and various effects are able to be projected onto their surfaces. Even if my head were to fit through. Angela Machogu plays Alice. Like how Alice looks up to all the characters in Wonderland. I also did that with my um, cast members because they're all so experienced and so amazing <laughs> at acting and so I've learned a lot from them. If you've seen versions of Wonderland or read the book, don't worry, you'll recognize recognize characters and scenes, but with that said, this version will be unlike anything you've ever seen before. For Weekend Showcase from North Hennepin Community College, Neil Persley, CCX News. Alice in Wonderland is on stage at North Hennepin Community College now through November 3rd, and for showtimes and ticket information, you can go to the North Hennepin Community College website or go to ours first, ccxmedia.org, and we will link you there. Still ahead, a crystal homeowner also known as the cemetery keeper. But first, local runners pursue spots in the state high school cross-country meet. John Jacobson is in next. The state class AA boys soccer tournament kicked off Thursday night. Two familiar rivals met in the quarterfinals as Wyzetta faced Minnetonka. Minnetonka as Cullen Doyle pushes out wide to Alejandro Ferrer logo. Perfect crossing pass there. Sergio Riva scores and it's 1-0 skippers. 12 minutes later, Stuart Sain's long drive misses Charles Kazmir, but it's off a defender's foot and in. That one ties it up at one at halftime. Just under 15 minutes left in the second half. Minnetonka strikes on the corner kick. Ferrer Lugo flicks it in. And that one worth another look. A great goal for the skippers, and they have a two to one lead. Trojan standout Patrick Wea makes his first appearance of the season after a knee injury. He nearly ties it late. But Luca Verikin makes the save. Minnetonka wins it over Wyzetta two to one. The state girls tennis tournament wrapped up Friday with singles and doubles championship matches. Rachel Kelly and Maddie Sook of Hopkins playing for the class double A doubles title. Kelly with the serve and Sook with a volley winner, putting the point away against Moundsview's Kronzen sisters, Taylor and Paige. The first set, a great battle. The teams will trade shots. Paige Tronson, we had a great shot down the line there for a point. The Moundsview duo wins the first set 7-6. But the Hopkins team dominates from there. Classic doubles point here. Sook will win it with great hands at the net. Kelly and Sook rally to win the second and third sets, and they capture the state title. Maple Grove, Zoe Atkins in the far court on the third place match in singles against Ashley Terrelay of St. Cloud Tech. And a winner there for Atkins. Now in the near court, she'll chase everything down and gets a great point. She takes third place in the state with a 6-2, 7-5 win. The state cross country meet is next Saturday in Northfield. Runners from several schools in the area compete in section 5AA and they were racing for spots at state Thursday. The girls up first at the Anoka High School course. St. Michael Albertville freshman Allie Weimer the winner in a time of 17 minutes and 50 seconds. Knights runners sweep the first five spots and easily win the team title. 
Osseo freshman Lex Davis finishes strong. She goes to state for a second straight year, finishing sixth overall. On the boys' side, Moundsview senior Austin Strite wins in a time of 15-27.9. The Mustangs are the team champions. A trio of local runners come to the wire here. Maple Grove's C.J. Young beats out Osseo's McKinnon Mokoro for sixth place. Charles Caven takes eighth for the Crimson. All three guys qualify for state. We talked to Osseo's Lex Davis and Maple Grove C.J. Young after their races. I feel like it took a little while to get here, but I've been like on a steady incline getting better, and I feel like I'm at a really big peak right now. Maybe I have a little bit more for state, but I think I probably do, but I think I'm in really good shape right now. Getting into the race, I knew I couldn't go out too hard or else I'd fall off because the top group is also placing top of the state at this point. So I've kind of played it smart throughout the first half, and then after that, I kind of, I knew I had to pick it off and drop off just like I did at conference and it all, over, it all went over really well for me. In Section 5, 3A Volleyball, Champlain Park is the number one seed. The Rebels hosting Park Center in the Section Tournament's quarterfinals. First set, Keatlin Weimer skirts to Izzy Ashburn, who sets it for Sammy Hilly. It's one of her 10 kills in the match. Then it's Ashburn going outside to senior Emma Schmidt for the big kill. The Rebels extend their first set lead, and for Schmidt, it's the 1,000th kill of her Champlain Park career. Congratulations to her. After the Rebels take the first set, they go back to work in the second. Lauren Clark with the hit and attack and kill there. Hannah Praske, a dangerous hitter on the outside for Champlain Park. She finishes tonight with eight kills. Champlain Park wins in three. They'll host Rogers in the semifinals Tuesday. Also in Section 5-3A, Osseo at home against Maple Grove. Lindy O'Jury getting a kill in the Orioles lead set one 17-13. Megan Liu long pass there and Skylar Gray gets the kill. But Otzi will take the set 25-20 on the kill by sophomore Riley Steister. Second set, Gray, a good swing on this ball. Kate Achenbach though with the block for Osseo. The short set for Emily Rossing. She gets the hit here for a kill for the Orioles on set point. It's Carissa Furman serving. Maple Grove can't get it back, and the ace gives the Osseo Orioles a two-set lead. Early in set three, more nice defense for Osseo. Rossing with the block for an Orioles point. But Maple Grove scores here. Elise Rossing getting the cross-court hit for a kill. Gray will rifle a hip through the blockers for Maple Grove. This one goes back and forth. Osseo senior Kelsey Seelock gets a kill. The Orioles go up 18-14. They advance with a sweep of the Crimson. They'll face second-seeded Wyzetta Tuesday at 7 o'clock at Champlain Park High School. The Class 6A football playoffs begin tonight, Friday. We cannot televise live, but you can see the Wyzetta Centennial game here on CCX starting right after the game concludes at approximately 9.45 p.m. Shannon, back to you. All right, thank you, John. One race to watch in Brooklyn Park is the race to represent the West District on the City Council. Incumbent Bob Maida faces Winfred Russell for the seat. Here are their candidate statements. Hi, my name is Bob Maida. I'm running for re-election to the City Council in the West District of Brooklyn Park. I've been a resident of Brooklyn Park for 34 years and have owned and operated my real estate business in Brooklyn Park for over 28 years. Working with clients on a daily basis, the one thing I learned very quickly is that you really need to listen in order to help with their problems and concerns. I've extended this same courtesy to you as your city councilman for the last six years. I try to take a more common sense approach in handling the city finances, your tax money. I will continue to fight to keep our city safe. I will keep fighting to eliminate wasteful spending and unnecessary programs. I will continue to ask the tough questions that others shy away from. I want to make city government more transparent for you. I ask for your continued support by voting for me, Bob Maida, on November 6th. Thank you. Hello, my name is Winfred Russell. I'm a 15-year resident of Brooklyn Park, a former planning commissioner, and a former Hennepin County Library board member. I'm running for city council in the West District, and I'm asking for your vote. I will fight to sustain the gains made in crime reduction, ensure that the fire department is staffed up to a national level, Advance an affordable housing policy, support livable wages, and encourage small business growth. My vision is a thriving city, vibrant neighborhoods, world-class parks and trails, an unrivaled quality of life, and a transit system that connects us all. Hope you will join me on this mission and vote 
Winfred Russell for Brooklyn Park City Council on November 6th. Thank you. Still ahead, a crystal homeowner who finds the spirit in Halloween. How he keeps his neighborhood spooky when we come back. Now here's a way to show off all those costumes. You can send photos to our CCX Facebook or CCX Twitter pages, and we will air them on Halloween. We look forward to seeing all those little ghosts and goblins, so show them off. A crystal homeowner really gets into the spirit of Halloween. Reporter Sonia Goen shows us how he's hoping to spook his neighbors into celebrating this scary season. This is the Brownwood neighborhood in Crystal. So Brownwood Cemetery has been in existence for three years. Brownwood Cemetery in the Brownwood neighborhood is haunted by skeletons, ghosts, and other nocturnal frightening creatures. Oh yeah, definitely. I, that, that's what Halloween's all about. I spend all of October watching horror movies. The creepy cemetery comes to life at night. Every year we just collect more and more, and then we have animated ghouls and like grim reapers and things like that. Homeowner Brad Snyder, AKA Cemetery Keeper. We've just been building and building. Says ever since he was a kid, he's enjoyed celebrating the haunted holiday. To see the decorations, you kind of get this feeling that something's coming that's gonna be exciting. Brad is disappointed others don't go all out, but he's hoping to change that by getting others into the spirit of the season with this ornate display. I hope it motivates people to decorate. While there are many scary things, Dad won. Brad says little trick-or-treaters will get a scream out of the haunted display. Rarely do I have a kid that's afraid to come up. They're always just really curious. He's hoping to give out a lot of fun frights and of course, candy. If we don't get a lot of trick-or-treaters, it kills me a little inside. <laughs> At the Creepy Crystal Cemetery. I love this, I love Halloween. Sonia Goins, CCX News. She liked it. That will do it for us on this Friday, but before we go, we will show off some of the fun from Thursday night's Give and Get in downtown Robbinsdale. So enjoy and have a good weekend.